you want some action? On the stage, I come alive. I'll give you some action. There's a wonderful audience out there. I wanted that audience for such a long time. Jumping, dancing, screaming, yelling. It's rock and roll. Tina Turner. The feel embodiment of hot, sexy rock and roll. A career that already spans four decades. Her star was rising back in the 60s. And she hasn't peaked yet. When last I checked, you were 53. How old are you in your mind? <laughs> Sometimes. Hmm. Sometimes. Let's see, how young do I get? I would have to say early 30s sometimes. On stage, I'm age ageless. Age is, is not a priority or even a thought when I'm there. Your vocal cords and your thighs are both made out of steel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm built strong. I know that. Strength of body, strength of character. Forged in an abusive marriage that's been over as long as it lasted, yet is as well known now to her fans as the musical legacy it produced. This week, Touchstone Pictures will release a feature film billed as the true story of her life. Featuring Angela Bassett as Tina, the movie is titled What's Love Got to Do With It? Ike Turner is played by Larry Fishburne. But the voice on the song's Bassett lip syncs is authentic Tina. She re-recorded eight numbers for the film. The studio describes this story as an heroic myth. That's quite a burden. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I accept. I'm, I'm thrilled about my achievements and how people are respecting me for that horrible life when I, I didn't think that I would, it would encourage anyone because I, I simply was just living my life and doing what I needed to do for myself. She was born Anna Mae Bullock in Cotton Country, Nutbush, Tennessee. Abandoned as a child, raised by an assortment of relatives, but she could sing. And at 17, she went to a club in St. Louis to see the hottest band in town. Ike Turner and the Kings of Rhythm. And things were never the same. I ran around following that band and all those people around for a long time wanting to get on his stage. And when I got there, I was thrilled. I was singing. That wasn't known in Tennessee, you see. It was just church and radio and picnics, but this was a real thing and a real band, and I wanted to be up there with him. Oh, I want to be right. I want to be made up. Anna Mae, you're going to have to sing rough on this. Yeah, exactly. You hear me? She had no idea how rough it was going to get. In short order, Anna Mae became Tina, and the Kings of Rhythm became the Ike and Tina Turner Review. Make me over. Make me nice. And when I'm done. He was going to make her a star. He gave her more than she'd ever had before, and he got a promise in return. He was a songwriter producer that really wanted to be a star, and every time he produced someone, they always left him. And I said to him, well, if we ever get a hit record, Ike, I won't leave you like the others. I meant it. In 1960, their first hit record came, Fool in Love, and with it, an important concert tour. Tina was his ticket to the big time, whether she wanted to go or not. I said I wasn't going on that tour. And after, that was the first time he had actually violently beat me. We're not talking about a lick or whatever. This was actually the first time he ever hit me. I was shocked because I never knew... I, my mother and father fought, but I'd never been actually seen anybody be beaten, so to speak, you know.
Yet Tina had made a promise not to leave him, and she honored it. She was the mother of the four children they had between them. They continued to produce records and toured constantly to pay the bills. And the violence not only continued, but escalated as Ike got into cocaine. Sometimes you'd see it with broken jaws and, and just, you know, with the coffee in the face and, and all of that. And, and Rhonda Graham traveled with the Ike and Tina Turner Review for 12 years. You felt helpless, just totally, totally helpless. And if, if you tried to help at all, then it came back and she was the one that got the blunt end of it, you know, and then he would go after her even more because you're trying to help. So the best thing to do was just to stay out of it and just hope that, you know, a few licks and, and that was it. The first seven years was dealing with the reality of what I had stepped into. The second seven years with Ike is when I started to think about that I must think about myself and how to leave and what to do. The obstacles was the fact that my kids were in high school, 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 to pull my kids out of school, not having a place for myself to try to put them in another school. Where, where would I put my children? What would I do? There was nothing that I couldn't deal with there for a little bit longer for the sake of my children. But by the mid-70s, Ike was out of control on drugs. Tina had reached the end of the road. There's an expression of being fed up to here and that you're fed up. Up. You don't say up to here even, you just say up. This was Ike and Tina Turner's final act. Hey, come on, man. I'm trying to get It was 1976, and they were on their way to do a show in Dallas. Hey, you better come back over here so I can get some sleep now. Go straight to hell, Ike. I was wearing a brand new Yves Saint Laurent white suit. I felt great that day. How dare someone ruin my day? Woman, I can't just get your ass in this car. I ain't playing with you, man. Tina says scenes like this weren't unusual, except this time she fought back. What's wrong with you? Talking to me like that. Huh? What you think? Don't start with me. I ain't in the mood today, all right? And so, pow. Hm. I turned and I looked and I said, all right, I told you. I will stay with you and try to help you through this period, but no more licks. And then... The fight started because he hit me again, and that time I hit him back. Sure felt great. <laughs> First time? Yeah, I think my hand bounced. I might have hit so hard. I was remembering it now. It's all coming back somehow. But yeah, I really gave a good one. By the time we got to the hotel, my face was really quite deformed. Really, out past my ear, the swelling was. And I didn't care that particular time. I was happy that blood was all over me, and I wanted the public to see, you know. They walked into the Hilton Hotel, and I had my head high. I never cried. I didn't cry once, because I knew that that was it. Can I call you a doctor? Oh, man, I don't know why I need no damn doctor. Where the elevator at? I grabbed my handbag, which was some toiletries and things. Sir? And the longer I ran, I think the faster I ran. And I ran straight out of the hotel, and there was a Ramada Inn across the way. And I never felt what it felt like to run across the freeway. It was terrifying. And I walked into the hotel, and I asked for the manager of the hotel. And of course, yes, I was full of blood, and my face was disfigured. And I said to him, I'm Tina Turner. I have 36 cents and a mobile car. But if you would give me a room, I swear. I will pay you back. You know, that was my word. That's all I could give. And surprisingly, this red-faced Texan said to me, the next day was the 4th of July, Independence Day. I was free. Fast forward 17 years. She's a world-famous solo act. And after all these years, still performing full out. Her current manager took her on when she was struggling to make it alone, playing Las Vegas lounges and almost 40 years old. Australian rock impresario Roger Davies. And Tina said to me, I know I can do it. I want to do it. I'll do whatever you tell me. You know, I want this badly. And that gave me the motivation to go and get a record deal, which was difficult. Her comeback album produced the hit of a lifetime, Tina's rock anthem. being a middle-aged woman really exciting <laughs> you know, possibilities it is a time where if you care about your health and how you look and about yourself 
You can radiate health and happiness and beauty. But I still couldn't wear your shoes. <laughs> Not for a day. And you work in shoes with heels this big. How do you do that? <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure. Do you like the music? Love the music. Do you like your music? Love my music. Do you like your voice? Uh, <laughs> I haven't found one that I wanted to replace it with yet, but it's a weird voice. I'm hearing it. Sometimes I'm thinking, who is that? <laughs> In the last five years, she's performed for at least seven million fans all over the world. And with her life story on the screen, and what may be her final concert tour on stage, this summer could be the pinnacle of her career. Tina Turner is on a roll. And we're rolling. So these last five, six years, what has life been like for you? Well, what can I say? I became happy. Happiness is something that's very rare for all of us. And, um, yes, I would say this type of happiness for the first time. Don't have to worry, you got no mind. I achieved my goals. I, my, my dream was realized. Still a lot of hard work, but that's the life. Give up, give up.